This is our fourth lesson of chapter zero, our sixth grade review chapter. And um, this lesson is going to be about adding and subtracting decimals. So let's get right to it. Our big note in this lesson is when adding and subtracting decimals, line up the decimals like buttons on a shirt. So if you take a look at this example shirt here, the decimals or the buttons are all in a line. That would be all the numbers we're adding together plus the answer at the end, okay? Very easy, let's get right to it. Uh, quick review, where does the decimal go in a whole number? This is a question that I see students struggle with quite a bit, believe it or not, they don't know where the decimal goes. So just a review, if we have the whole number 35, and we have to put a decimal in that so that we can align our numbers, line up our decimals to add or subtract. Um, the decimal point, let's take a look. 35, the three is in the tens place. The five is in the ones place, which means the decimal goes at the end. It goes after it. So if we have to add some zeros back here, we will. Um, but just a really quick refresher, whole numbers, the decimal is at the end. Okay, let's take a look at an example problem. This problem is not in your notes, so just follow along. Just pay attention and listen. Okay, you can copy it down if you would like to. Our first number is 53 and 1 tenth, and we are going to add to it 1 and 97 thousandths. So we line them up by the decimal points. Okay, 1 and 97 thousandths. Now for addition, it does not matter which number we put on top. Uh, addition is what we call commutative, so they, we can flip the order of the numbers and we'll still get the same sum. Um, subtraction though, subtraction we have to do the problem in the exact order it comes in. We're going to see one of those in a minute. So you will notice that I put some zeros here. I wanted to fill up my place values. I want to have uh, numbers to add to the numbers that are below it or above it. Uh, if you want, you can put a zero here underneath the five, but typically we do not do that. It doesn't change things. If you want to, go for it. So line up our decimals like buttons on a shirt. The decimals are lined up in our problem. Let's line up the decimal in our answer as well. And now we can add zero plus seven is seven. Zero plus nine is nine. One plus zero is one. Three plus one is four and five plus nothing is five. Our decimal is already there because that was the second thing we did after we lined up our problem, we placed our decimal. So our final answer is 54 and 197 thousandths. Very, very easy. Do not skip the next example. The next example, this one, is one of the most frequently um, missed questions that I give on tests and quizzes. I love to give these kinds of problems, so pay attention here. Uh, the first number is 91. That is a whole number. Remember, the decimal goes at the end of a whole number, so I'm going to place it there now. And we are subtracting from that 91 34 tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. So it's 91 minus 34 ten thousandths. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to line up our numbers by the decimals, okay? 91 comes first in the problem. It has to come first when we line them up vertically. There is no change in it for subtraction. Subtraction is not commutative, okay? So when I line up this problem, it's going to look a little strange at first, right? Our numbers really don't have anything lined up with it. So I definitely want to take that opportunity to put my zeros into place. One zero for every digit. And remember, if you want to put zeros down here, you are welcome to. A lot of times we skip that, but we can do it if it makes you feel better. <clears throat> so decimal, decimal, let's place the decimal in my final answer. And now I have to do some subtracting. Zero minus four, I cannot do that. I can't take four from nothing, so I have to borrow. So I look to the number next door, it's another zero. There's nothing to borrow from it. I look to the number next door, another zero, nothing to borrow. Another zero, nothing to borrow. So I have to go all the way over here to the ones place. And I'm gonna borrow from that ones place. I'm gonna borrow a one, that means there are zero ones left in the ones place. 
when I borrow that one, it becomes 10 tenths. I'm going to borrow from that 10, it becomes a 9. That gives me 10 hundredths. I'm going to borrow from that 10, it gives me a 9. It gives me 10 thousandths. I'm going to borrow from that 10, that gives me a 9. And now I have 10 in the 10 thousandths place. <clears throat> so 10 minus 4 is 6. 9 minus 3 is again 6. 9 minus 0 is 9. 9 minus 0 is 9. 0 minus 0 is 0. And 9 minus 0 is 9. So our final answer here is 90 and 9,966 ten thousandths. Feel free to watch this example a couple times. Like I said before, this is the most frequently type of missed problem in this lesson. It starts with the lining up at the decimal places and it continues with the adding the zeros and the borrowing. So make sure you're familiar with this. You will see these on upcoming quizzes.